Today, it's all about plate carriers and chest rigs. Welcome to the Surplus Bunker, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, let's go ahead and roll right into it. We have before you a few examples of chest rigs in my collection. Each one is set up differently. Now, why do I have so many chest rigs? Well, one, I'm a collector of military surplus. And on the other hand, I'm very much into tactical things and preparedness. I have extra kit for a few reasons. Different mission sets and different styles and setups of the rifles in my collection. Depending upon what type of role I'm serving, either a designated marksman or an automatic rifleman, or a rifleman, I will have a different system for each platform in my collection. It will vary based upon mission set as well. Now, for example, if I'm serving the role of a designated marksman, I might need some extra storage capacity because I will likely carry a ballistic calculator. I will likely carry other bits of accessories, a compass, Obviously, I'm going to have my medical gear. So having something like this set up, where I have extra storage capacity, is an absolute necessity. In addition to that, this rig on the far right is capable of taking eight magazines. It's a very useful bit of kit. And I like the fact that all the pouches are stitched on, with the exception of the hanging pouch, which I would fill with medical supplies if I was to take this out into the field. I also have dual pistol pouch, magazine pouches on here, which is a great accessory to have because now I can dump that civil defense belt that you have seen the video on. If you haven't, checked that out. I'm not going to carry that if I'm carrying this type of loadout. It's just extra weight. I'm looking to move as light as possible, and that's the loadout I would use around that setup. Now, the other reason I would roll with that setup, and it's in a similar philosophy to the rig to the left of it, if we are operating as a Minuteman, we don't need a lot of sustainment kit. The only sustainment gear we really need is for the rifle that we're carrying, not for our person. We might have a light patrol pack with us. In there, we'll have some food and other things to maybe make a 12, 24 hour, or maybe up to 72 hour rotation a little more comfortable. But let's look at the history of the Minuteman, the history of the citizen soldier, which a lot of people feel has been relegated to the past. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth, because how many hours into the Ukraine war was everyone suddenly declared to be a combatant? Congratulations, welcome to the army. Large standing armies as a whole, and a small class of citizens serving in those roles, is a rare thing in history. Throughout most of history, every single able-bodied man has provided for the defense of his community and his town. That is a fact, and it is a fact that we will see more of that in the immediate short term. It's just going to happen. Over the next few years, you're going to see more and more people put into harm's way that have no training, no experience. And frankly, it's a shame that people allowed themselves to become so soft and incapable of defending themselves in their community. But that's where we're at in the modern world. We'll have to deal with it when we cross that bridge, unfortunately. But if you're actually serious about this, you're going to take all of what I have to say very seriously here today, and you're going to go out, you're going to get this stuff, and you're going to get training. So on this pouch here, for example, I run medical gear just like I would on this one. I want to have some standardization between all the loadouts, right? Because I don't want to be hunting for any of this stuff. I want to know right where it is. And ideally, everyone in my team has some type of similar loadout based on the mission with some slight variation based around the type of rifle that we're all carrying. But this would be intended for a 12, maybe 24-hour mission tops. And then I have my patrol pack, which has more sustainment equipment in it. The sustainment system for these loadouts is the town in which we're operating from. We're relying on the community. And in fact, we likely have hot meals even being brought to our position, right? Because we're not off in the bush. A lot of this is intended to be utilized potentially even in the early days of a conflict or civil unrest event, where maybe even carrying rifle plates isn't a necessity at this point. We are not sure, but it's unlikely that we will be engaging in conflict with these loadouts. This is more of a defensive setup. 
We'll be getting into the more offensive equipment in just a moment, but this is based around the idea that you are mostly pulling security in your community and operating out of the town. I'm gonna harp on that, that's huge, because we see a lot of guys buying carriers, a lot of guys pushing plate carriers and things on the community, and there's really no philosophy of use behind it. It's simply just, oh, well, this will carry mags, and here's some pouches, you'll be good. But will you be good? I would submit not, especially if you have to go out for days and days at a time. Now, if I was to go out into the bush for a much longer period of time, this is where this tactical tailor rig would come into play. I have large sustainment pouches that I can put a variety of accessories in. And my thought here is, if I was in a position where I had to dump my patrol pack, I want enough things on my chest rig to keep me comfortable for maybe a few days being cut off from everything and everyone as I work my way back to safety. So I have the contents of a really stripped down seer kit in here. Survival, evasion, recovery, and escape type stuff. I've got everything from bedding, compass, all the types of things, by the way, that if you are serving in the role of a section leader, platoon leader, platoon sergeant, you would also have, right? So we want stuff like a Garmin unit, we want some GPS tools, we want some navigational equipment, maps, and all that jazz, right? That's where we have the more expansive pouches. That's also why something like this is also really useful because as I mentioned, you can run a ballistic calculator, but you can put maps, you can put range cards. That's why you need extra storage capacity. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the plate carriers. The plate carriers come into play when we know for certain we're gonna participate in a two-way gun range. Now in frame here, we have two carriers that are set up for two very different mission sets. The one on the right is by Agalite, and it's an awesome, absolutely awesome carrier, by far the most comfortable plate carrier I've ever worn for long periods of time, having worn this for up to 12 hours plus at a time, and I'm thrilled with it. There's a reason it's still part of my rotation that I haven't sold it off yet. I've had this now for a number of years, Big, big fan of this loadout. In addition to that, we have HSGI pouches on the front. Now, one of the big things to hit on too, any of the equipment that you've seen here today is not stuff that you can simply run out and get when the happening happens. First of all, you need to be familiar with it. You need to be familiar with where you're storing all your kit. And you're seeing that uniformity in my stuff, right? Here I have another hanger pouch, and in it I have medical gear. All my stuff has some level of uniformity. So during an emergency, everyone on my team knows where it is, and I know where it is. All this is made by military manufacturers. Though. That's something you have to bear in mind here, is that when the happening happens, as it has been, certain items are getting harder to get. HSGI is a military vendor. They have contracts with the Marine Corps. The civilian market will dry up for HSGI pouches, and these are probably the best pouches, in my opinion, that are readily available simply because they work with literally every single type of magazine you can think of. From AR-10 mags, to SETME mags, to AK mags, and you'll see these HSGI pouches even being run by Russian Spetsnaz operators, by the way. Literally, everyone loves these, so they're definitely worth taking a look at, and there's a lot of knockoffs out there, so be careful, order directly from HSGI if you decide to go that route. Caveat, they're not super affordable. So if we're on a budget, I would encourage you to hit up eBay. Make sure you buy from reputable vendors or reputable brands when you're going on the secondary market because you can buy the bulk of this stuff surplus. Not all of it, but the bulk of it. And it might be last year's stuff or maybe five or 10 years old. It's all workable. There's a lot of guys who now have decided that Alice gear is the bee's knees and they're going back to Alice gear. It works, it's great load bearing equipment. So don't think you're limited to just the stuff that you're seeing here. Just know that everything has its limitations and everything has a specific mission set based around how you set that gear up. Now Alice, that's pretty much gonna cover you for everything, I'll be blunt. Uh, there's not too many scenarios where Alice gear won't work. You just have to have the right pouches for that mission set and a good quality patrol pack. Easy as that. So this rig on the left here is made by a tactical firm in Russia called ANA. The carrier has a weird story. It's actually a copy of a Taiwanese copy of an American produced rig by Tasmanian Gear, I believe is the firm name. And it's outstanding. It can be converted into a chest rig by simply folding this back, 
and you can even run it with the H harness that comes with just the front rig, or you can buy the back panel, which gives you more options for Molly and additional capability. The thing that I really like about this setup is of course that all the pouches are stitched onto it. These are almost as large as the pouches that are on my tactical tailor chest rig, almost as large. And the actual components of this chest rig are really well put together. The stitching appears to be really high quality so far. The buckles are decent. I'll, I'll say they're not the best. I don't know if there were maybe a couple generations of buckle and they didn't disclose that because some of these don't work as great together as I think that they should. So just a cautionary tale here. And the other problem, as I mentioned, all these companies are military vendors. So what's happening with ANA right now? Well, you can only get black. This rig, this rig is actually available in a variety of camouflage patterns from multi-cam to ATAX to even Flora, I believe. But good luck getting any of those right now because they're just not available. <laughs> they're very popular amongst both Russian and Ukrainian forces, interestingly enough. Now, big caveat. The way that these pouches are built, they're built around AK-47 and 74 magazines. So running a conventional AR-15 magazine in them is going to be a little difficult. Now, you may use this for your rifleman, your automatic rifleman in your squad, because the pouches are longer, so it can accommodate the PMAG-40 a little better, right? If you're going to run the standard AR mags, though, you're going to need to put something in here to soak up some of that dead space because it becomes very hard to grab at it. However, the beauty, too, of this being a long-term sustainment type loadout is that you can fit uh, two magazines in each one of these pouches. So you've got eight mags on here and then however many you have in your pack. So some food for thought there. There's a lot of options out there, guys. Make sure you buy something that's high quality. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, if you find something you're not sure about, feel free to drop a comment below. We'll talk about it. There's plenty of people here who are subscribed to the channel who have tons of knowledge and experience, and they'll be happy to share it with you. Thank you guys for tuning in today, and stay tuned for more updates and videos.